Look, Falinx gets a move that literally no other Pokemon in the game gets, and it's honestly insane. You get a boost in every single stat at the price of not being able to switch out, but Falinx does not care, we ain't switching out anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a match with a team full of Pokemon that are pretty much forgotten, but we've actually got some really fun tricks under our sleeves, and this team is extremely fun. Hey, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second, and it really helps out the channel. And let's go ahead and get ourselves into the game. So, my opponent is going to end up leading off with their Lycanroc, as I decide to toss out none other than the Big Tiggly. Wigglytuff is back, baby, and better than ever. Uh, and this thing's basically here to set up some Stealth Rock, potentially kind of cripple some things with Thunder Wave action, and just overall have a bouncy good time. So, uh, the Lycanroc, of course, is just going to be a Stealth Rock lead, and we just basically are going to trade Stealth Rock here, which I'm pretty much fine with. I say, you show me yours, I'll, I'll definitely show you mine. So we get our Stealth Rock up, which is going to be pretty nice here. Now, I'm going to run into the issue where this Lycanroc is actually kind of a bit of a problem to my team. I do have the Falinx in the back, but I want to kind of wait for the right moment to get that bad boy going. So what I'm going to do is basically go for the Thunder Wave knowing I can take an attack. It actually ends up getting a Stone Edge crit and nearly knocks out the Wigglytuff. But luckily, I am able to get off the Thunder Wave here. That's going to basically allow a lot of my team to be able to outspeed this thing, and it's not really that big of an issue. So, uh, at this point, of course, they probably have the Accelerock priority, but I wasn't really accounting for the crit, and they are going to break through the para, and that's going to end up knocking out the big Tiggly. So, Wigglytuff goes down, but that's honestly fine, because now I can just basically get a free switch into whatever I want. And I figure Arbok has actually a pretty decent opportunity to set up against this thing. So... Here's what all the cool kids are doing with Arbok these days. Essentially, with the loaded dice item paired with Scale Shot, you can actually get Arbok to do some stuff if you can potentially get up some Coil action. So, what I'm going to do here is basically just go for a Raw Dog Coil. I know that with an Intimidate, Lycanroc can't really touch me that hard, and I can basically grab a nice little attack boost here. Um, so, Lycanroc, I'm hoping for a Paralyze here. It actually does not get Paralyzed, and it also hits another Stone Edge. So, this thing's like a damn superhero over here. Uh, I do take it relatively nicely, but I take a little bit more damage than I was kind of hoping to in this matchup. A Para would have been ideal because Arbok does need all the help he can get, but at this point I'm now going to go ahead and commit the Terra. So this is also going to be a Dragon Terra, and with all the things we talked about combined, Arbok is actually kind of a threat now. I go for the Dragon Terra because what that does is gives me Stab on my uh, Scale Shot, which I can hit guaranteed at least four times with the loaded dice, and it should be enough to take care of the Lycanroc with the Terra. Um, I actually was considering going for the Earthquake, but then I think this thing is probably running Focus Sash. So instead, uh, the Scale Shot is going to break through a potential Focus Sash, and with four hits, that is going to take care of it. So we got a nice little attack boost, and with the Scale Shot, we actually are going to grab a nice little speed boost from shedding our scales. So I am faster than everything they have at this point, but the biggest problem is this, and that is Cresselia. So, Here's where I probably should have gone for another coil. Knowing that I would have been able to outspeed this thing, a scale shot after a Terra, uh, if it's defensive Cresselia, is not quite going to be enough. I do go for this scale shot regardless with that plus one attack boost. And as you're going to see here, even with the four hits, uh, Cresselia is just way too bulky of a damn moon duck. I am pretty much out of my league here fighting Cresselia with the Arbok. So a little bit of a premature setup as it's five hits actually almost close to being able to knock this thing out. But it is going to be able to essentially just finish me off with a moon blast. Here's where I probably also could have considered staying poison type and then going for the Terra baiting in something like a Psy Shock, uh, trying to take that attack and then, you know, potentially committing the Terra on the next turn, something like that. Regardless, Arbok does go down, doesn't get the sweep that we're looking for, but I do kind of break the team a little bit in that I'm able to get the nice chip damage on the Cresselia. Because honestly, my PUS team is not going to be looking too great in terms of damage against the Cresselia, so getting that amount of chip is actually super nice. So what I decide to do now is bring in the Pyroar. And this thing is basically built to go for Hyper Voice. With that normal stab, can do a pretty decent amount of damage, but more importantly, activate the Throat Spray. You get the breath smelling nice, and that gives us a nice little special attack boost, as this thing actually ends up going for the damn Lunar Blessing. And the only thing worse than a Cresselia is a Cresselia that can heal. So Lunar Blessing gives them a little bit of health there, and I'm thinking, hey, after that special attack boost, this Hyper Voice should probably kill, right? Like, I mean, a plus one, Pyroar has some pretty solid special attack. It actually ends up living it with literally like 2 HP. And it is able to fire off a Psychic, which does get a critical hit. So I'm feeling like I'm just being kicked while I'm down over here. And now I decide to go for the Trailblaze. I know that's easily going to knock this thing out. I can get a plus one speed boost and have a great matchup against whatever they have next. But it actually is a Rocky Helmet Cresselia. And touching it makes me die. So that was not ideal. Actually, would have been really well positioned 
with Pyroar as a special attack boost and a speed boost, which is why we run Trailblaze. But that did not go according to plan, and uh, I'm just chilling in the depths of hell right now. But on the free switch, I decided to bring in the Cacturn. Now this is an interesting Cacturn in that uh, I'm actually a special oriented one with choice specs, and they decided to go into the Palafin. So Palafin has an interesting matchup here, probably does not want to stay in. I'm going to end up going for the switcheroo, as they completely forget about <laughs> the water absorb here. And Cacturn, the reason why we use these mods is because people do not know what they're about. And the water absorb there is super clutch because that allows me to say, hey, hold this real quick. And this thing is now a choice specs Palafin, which makes this thing a whole lot easier to take care of. Um, Palafin in general, just an extremely scary Pokemon. It's actually banned to Ubers at the moment, but we're just gonna see if we can make it happen with this team. Anyway, they are forced to switch here as they're stuck into, um, you know, basically a Palafin that can't touch me. So I end up going for the Dark Pulse expecting the switch as they go into the Arcanine. And honestly, the Cacturn is looking like a great kind of check to that Palafin. So I'm actually gonna end up switching this thing out. Do wanna conserve it for later. And I end up going into Young Pierre. The French Swallow comes in here and I think I have a decent matchup uh, against an Arcanine here. So this thing is gonna go for a Fire Blast, does connect and does a bunch of damage. But what it also does is knocks me down to my Gluttony range to where I can actually activate my Custat Berry, be able to outspeed this thing in an unnatural fashion and then knock it out with an Earthquake, which is honestly just hilarious. Swallot being quick is pretty fun. So they actually are gonna end up committing a Terra here. They wanna go for the Terra Ground uh, to remove their ground weakness. But I'll tell you what, Swallot, is the type of dude who does not give a shit. He puts the straight up earth on his head, and with my Custat Berry, I'm able to outspeed, and down goes the Arcanine. So, Swalot taking that thing out is actually pretty sweet. We love to see it. Swalot actually being able to do some stuff. Custat Berry being back, honestly, is so much fun. You pair that with Gluttony, and it's actually pretty easy to get to activate on this thing. Uh, it's actually mostly here for Destiny Bond. With Custat Berry and Destiny Bond, it can be pretty damn insane. As Back comes the Palafin. So this thing goes to full hero mode, and it's actually a pretty damn big threat. Now, they can't really lock themselves into a water move, because of course I do have the Cacturn in the back. So they have to go for the Drain Punch, expecting to switch into the Cacturn, but I just stay in and go for that Destiny Bond, basically knowing that uh, it's not really a huge deal, as I should be able to take care of this thing with something I have in the back. So at this point, I know one more actually doesn't kill as I go for the poison jab, just basically trying to get some chip or potentially a poison uh, to have uh, this thing a little bit more weakened by the time I bring in my next matchup. But I probably should have just gone for another uh, Destiny Bond here. It's not really a huge deal because I get this thing around half. And it's at this point where the absolute threat, the biggest monster in the game, or I guess monsters, are about to come out. And that is our good friend, Falling. So, Pierre does go down, but we were able to do our Custap shenanigans and we love to see it. So now, it is time. I have two Pokemon left and a Dream, and I have a pack of Milk Duds ready to get some shit going. So, Falling is quite the interesting Pokemon. They have three Mons left at this point. They have a, uh, obviously, Palafin, they have the Hydreigon, and they also have a Hisuian Decidueye. So, I'm gonna go for a No Retreat. Basically the greatest move ever. This thing essentially says, I don't give a shit, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm gonna grab myself a boost in all of my stats. Most importantly, attack and speed. Um, so we go ahead and bring out our torches, and we are ready to party at this point. We get the attack boost, defense, special attack, the whole the whole shindig. And uh, as they switch into the high dragon, this is actually interesting because with the no retreat boost, I am actually gonna be faster, and with the special defense boost, even if this thing is Scarf, uh, I should be able to actually take an attack from this thing. So the boys are marching around, ready to basically do some death. And at this point, I can essentially just outspeed and go for that close combat. And the dragon stands essentially no chance. The close combat is going to drop our defenses, but that just brings us back to neutral, baby, and we are ready to go. Uh, their final two Pokemon hopefully shouldn't be able to take care of the Phalanx. And honestly, this guy's probably never even seen this Pokemon in a competitive battle ever. So... <laughs> They're gonna go into the Decidueye. Now the benefit of this thing is that it's actually not gonna be the ghost type Decidueye and I can actually still just beat the shit out of you. And with that attack boost, it actually just ends up knocking this thing out because Phalanx actually honestly goes crazy. With the close combat coverage and an attack boost, it does so much damage and it's actually relatively quick after that plus one. So their final Pokemon is gonna be Palafin. The uber superhero ass dolphin that looks kind of crazy. and. As it turns out, they're actually, they're not going to want the smoke from the filings. They're actually going to end up going for the run. And essentially, I'm going to call it a rage quit against uh, <laughs> against six little guys. So I thought that was just a kind of a fun match going up against a team that is much scarier. 
and Phalanx just showing that it can actually be a pretty damn big threat. You truly don't need to use all of the popular threats to have a pretty scary team. Anyway, if you enjoyed, leave a like on the video, and I really appreciate the support. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.